Welcome to the Arrow Points Podcast. I'm your host, author, and veteran, Jeff Clark. If you like the show, please give it a follow on social media and consider leaving a five-star review. Today, we are talking about technology dependency. Are we losing important aspects of the human experience because we've become impatient, impulsive, forgetful, even narcissistic because we have technology in our hands at all times? And I think this is a very concerning subject. Um, and I think because we carry an iPhone or a smartphone, uh, for those of you who use an Android or a different version um, in your hand, um, we often feel naked without it. And like your wallet and your keys have, you know, have become and, and have been for years um, a staple of the things that you carry when you leave the house. Uh, I carry a few other things like a knife and a small flashlight and a couple little readiness items. But your phone has become mandatory equipment that you carry with you. And because of that, what do we do when we no longer have it? What happens when you lose it? What happens when you put it down for a little while? Um, something that I found as I kind of studied this topic in my own home was when I put down my phone, I found myself constantly looking at it to see if there's a notification. Um, social media has kind of almost brainwashed us into having this technology dependency that is kind of concerning, and according to this report that I pulled, um, it's a major reason why we feel so much anxiety when our phones are lost, dead, or even out of reach for just even a few minutes. We constantly are having that, it's a dependency, really, or an addiction to continuously look at the screen and having that screen time. Now, um, there's a doctor, um, wrote a New York Times article, it was back in 2010, but I think it's still very important today, um, he says, more and more life is resembling the chat room. We're paying a price in terms of our cognitive life because of the virtual lifestyle. Some studies have even suggested that excessive dependence on cell phones and the internet is akin to an addiction. Technology detracts from interpersonal relationships and social norms. Um, I find this very interesting because he goes on to say that um, when it comes to technology dependency and not having something that you're connected to. Um, reports say that 70% of women and 61% per, of men experience s- symptoms related to anxiety and technology dependency, which is alarming. Is it creating problems? Is it taking away the human element and human interaction? I think we could make a big argument that that answer is yes. And technology can t- dependence in this report said it can do a lot of things like heighten the symptoms of pre-existing disorders such as social phobia, social anxiety disorder, or panic disorder. And regardless of how you feel about you know the words of anxiety, depression, um, and a lot of those other words, some people have you know their opinions about those things. If those things already exist, you already question yourself uh, as a human being. You have that kind of that. Um, you know, that imposter syndrome, or maybe you don't like being in big crowds, um, and then you take away technology that kind of gives you a solid foundation. I think that's uh, very alarming, and it could be that one of those things is because you have a technology dependency that has become a norm so much so that it's comfortable, and it gives you comfort. It kind of gives you a solid foundation during those times of heightened anxiety. So when you take it away, what happens? Well, you become more anxious because of that. Well, here's some social media statistics that I found uh, very, very interesting. These are social statistics from 2023. This is a report by a business advisor. Very interesting. The 2023 key social media statistics. Here it goes. Um, In 2023, an estimated 4.9 billion people use social media across the world. That's a lot of people using social media across the world. What is staggering and I think is really surprising is that number is to jump from 4.9 billion to 5.85 billion users by 2027. So in just four years, really three, because 2023 um, is kind of is over, it was well over. But by 2027, we're going to 
jump in expected users on social media by a billion people. That is a lot. And the stats that keep going further really, really are profound. The average user spends their digital footprint or spreads their digital footprint across a staggering six to seven social media platforms every single month. And when you consider Facebook, Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, TikTok, what else is out there? We got like WhatsApp, you got Substack. I just named like six right there. That's a lot of social media. But here's why it's such a big deal nowadays. The social media market in 2022 is valued at $49 billion. That is a lot. Facebook ruled that the most used social media platform in the world is Facebook with 2.9 million monthly active users across the world. That's monthly. 2.9 million people are active on Facebook all across the world. That is crazy. YouTube is hot on its heels. This is as of 2023. YouTube is hot on its heels, clocking in at 2.5 million monthly active users. So that's pretty close, 2.9 compared to 2.5. I think that's huge. That's really, really big. So it tells me that people are scrolling a lot. Facebook commands 53% of all social media site visits in the United States alone. So 53% of the United States that's using social media is using Facebook. Do you want to know why we have a technology dependency? I'm going to tell you some more. People in the U.S. have an expected average of 7.1 social media accounts. That's average. That means some people have less and some people have quite a few more. The global perspective, however, is a little different. On a global scale, the average individual boasts 8.4 social media accounts. So compared to the United States, that's one and a half, almost one and a half more social media accounts per individual. The highest, though, is it's kind of shocking. I, I didn't expect this country to to make the list like this. Maybe you did, that you're listening. India came in at the highest with 11.5 social media accounts per user. That's the average. Japan was at 3.8, and they were the lowest. 3.8 social media platforms per user. Here's a further staggering statistic that kind of yields to why are we using so many social media accounts on a monthly basis? Why is India at 11.5? Well, the average person spends 145 minutes on social media every day. That is two hours and 25 minutes. Two hours and 25 minutes um, on social media every day. But interesting enough, Americans fall slightly below that average, and we're at two hours and seven minutes a day. So the average you know, across the globe is two hours and 25 minutes. The United States is two hours and seven minutes. But do you really want to know what is keeping people online and connected? Is short form videos, that instant gratification that you're addicted to. You can just continuously scroll. You can get laugh after laugh. You can get DIY tip after DIY tip. The search element is taken out of the smartphone now. You don't have to search for it. The algorithm is going to show you things that it knows that you want to look at. 66% of consumers consume short form content. That's highly shareable short form content that is two and a half times more engaging than longer videos, their predecessors. So if you ever wondered why when you go on to YouTube, you go on to Instagram, TikTok, there's always these, sh- always these short little clips. They call them reels or whatever. It's because not only are those platforms kind of designed around those things, it's because it's what's getting the highest user engagement. And these platforms want you on their platform because it pays the bills. That's what's bringing them in money for advertisers. That is huge. But the biggest statistics of them all that really make me go, okay, this is why we have a problem. 99% of all social media users use a smartphone. 99% use a tablet or a smartphone. 78% of those do exclusively on their phone. Exclusively on their phone. So the desktop, the computer that we used to be a big deal, only 1.32% of people use social media on their desktop. That tells me that we're so connected to a mobile device that the desktop is almost irrelevant. So what does that say? 
it says that because technology is so woven into our lives through advertising and connection with peers and family and friends that we have no choice but to spend hours and hours every day on our phone, on this device right here that I'm holding in my hand. I did an experiment this last week. I turned the, the screen time. I turned the screen time on my phone and I checked to see how much was I really on my phone. And I went in there and I looked at the report that you can pull up on your iPhone and it told me how many hours a day I was using my smart device. And it was anywhere from two to four hours a day that I was using this device. And obviously I'm using it for social media, maybe a couple other things like checking email, but for the most part, um, the report said I was using it for social media. That's two to four hours every single day that I could be doing something else. Home projects, reading a book. I have book projects I need to work on. I could be getting creative. Could be making more content like this. Could be doing a lot of research and educating myself. Of those two to four hours every single day, I was on social media goofing off, reading, scrolling. So what I did was I started putting limits on there and on the screen time app on the iPhone, at least I'm sure it's the same on Android and other devices, but you can turn it on where you can limit yourself, how much social media and how many on the apps, how much time a day that you want to spend on it. And I just dropped it down to an hour. I want to spend no more than an hour on social media every single day, which means the other hours I'm reserving for other things, reading, writing, housework, interacting with my family, which I think is maybe the most important thing when it comes to interpersonal relationships and the human connection and using that time for real things and not using it to scour the internet for mindless nonsense, which is half of it. And then I also noticed one thing too. I spent less time on Amazon and I spent less money because I wasn't constantly being fed advertisements for products. I was saving money. I literally saved money by doing this. And I think that is huge. So what are some things that you can do to kind of combat this technology dependency? Well, you can do a lot of little things and it's kind of shocking. There's one thing that you should be doing. Uh, no texting while driving. Well, that's kind of a no brainer, but I even found myself over this last like two weeks at a red light, grabbing my phone just to check things. And I realized, Ooh, I'm really connected to this thing. Don't take your device into the bathroom. It sounds funny, kind of comical, but you know what? How many of you listening right now have done that before? Have taken your phone into the bathroom while you went to go do your business and you were scrolling mindlessly? I bet a bunch of you have. Pay with your wallet. For those of you who use you know, actual wallets anymore, uh, instead of using the electronic payment methods on your phone, try paying with your wallet. It'll do a lot of different things. The first thing it'll do is make you question that purchase is if you really need it, if you really need to use it. Um, and the other thing it'll do is actually make you kind of think, think for a second about what you're doing. It makes you decide if you really want to make that final transaction. Next is keep your phone out of bed. Um, a lot of people try to reduce technology dependency by breaking that habit. Do you want to fall asleep scrolling through Facebook? Put your phone out of reach as soon as you hit the bed. My phone is actually on a little nightstand that's several feet away from the bed, so I can't even roll to the edge of the bed and reach over and grab it. It's that far out of my reach. So once I put it on that charger and then I, I step into bed, I can't reach it anymore. I sleep a little bit better because I'm not constantly in that state of alertness if my phone's going to go off. Turn your phone off when you're with your friends. When you're in the company of people, family and friends, turn your phone off. Just turn it off. Turn it on silent or whatever so that you're not tempted to look at it. You're not tempted to be alert to the notifications or anything like that. Just turn it off. And then this one I don't really recommend, but this is what this report says. It says try leaving your phone at home. Obviously, we're connected to these devices, and it gives us a sense of safety and security when it comes to emergency situations. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably leave it at home. Some of you might. Some of you might have that trust, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily do that. So... Is technology dependency an issue? I absolutely do believe it is. Just based on my own research and my own little experiment that I've done over this last week and a half and done some research online, I found myself very connected to my phone in a very real way. And what I've noticed the last couple of days of disconnecting from my phone is that I've had more time. I've saved a little bit of money because I haven't spent as much. 
and I felt a little more relaxed. I actually felt like I wasn't nervous about who was maybe contacting me or what notifications I was having on my phone from social media or any of that. So I felt a little more alive as an individual. Do we have an issue? Is it real? Drop me a comment, um, hit me up on social media and let me know what you think. Do we have technology dependency issues? And lastly, if you like this episode and you want to see more, hit that follow and subscribe button. Don't forget to leave a five-star review. Reviews are killer when it comes to podcasts and how they get to their listeners. Also, give us a follow on social media and head over to jeffclarkofficial.com for more. And remember, stay sharp, stay informed, and stay engaged.